Hey everybody, good afternoon. I'm Emily and this is CookingDisney.com. My husband and I had a great time on our recent vacation to Disney World and we decided to come home and see which recipes we could make at home. Uh, the Disney chefs are gracious enough to give you recipes most of the time if you ask for them. And there's several really good sites for recipes online as well. Uh, AllEars.net has a great dining site uh, where you can get recipes from the Disney chefs. And there's also a Cooking Disney thread um, on the Disboards.com, which is one of my favorite websites. So what we're going to do every week is you folks can email me at emily at CookingDisney.com and let me know which Disney recipe you would like me to cook the following week. Or you can hop on over to the Discords and join the Cooking Disney thread and just send me a message and let me know which recipe you would like to see next week on the show. Today is La Cellier's famous mushroom risotto. So many people love this recipe. It was the overwhelming favorite this week. And so I just got back from my trip to the Fresh Market with everything that we need for La Cellier's mushroom risotto. You're going to start things off today with a half pound of mushrooms, four tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of minced garlic, salt and fresh cracked pepper, whole butter, one pound of arborio rice, one small onion, a cup and a half of grated Parmesan cheese, seven cups of beef stock, and two cups of heavy cream. Today's recipe doesn't take a lot of um, preparation as far as utensils go. What you're gonna need is a cutting board and a good solid knife. You're gonna need a pan with parchment paper and a six quart really deep pot, like a, almost like a stock pot, um, to do all of your cooking in. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice and roast our mushrooms. Anytime you have a recipe calling for fresh mushrooms, please make sure that you rinse and dry your mushrooms really well. It doesn't matter how good the recipe is, if it's a dirty mushroom and you get grit in your teeth, it's just gonna kill it. So you wanna make sure that you slice your mushrooms to the consistency that you want in your recipe. I know the last time I was at La Cellier, they, um, the mushroom pieces were really small and I actually love a good mushroom. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit chunkier. So once you've got them chopped up the way you want them, all you wanna do is coat them with just enough olive oil to get them moist. Don't want them to be greasy. And then once you have fun mixing those around, you're just gonna add a quarter teaspoon of minced garlic, salt, and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. God, that's hard with oil on your hands, <laughs> sorry. Mix all that together. And then you're gonna put this, and then you're gonna put this on a uh, pan, on a sheet of parchment paper, lay it out. You're gonna put that in, you're gonna put that in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And once that comes out of the oven, you can just set them to the side. After the mushrooms, you can go ahead and get started on your onions. Make sure you get those cut up into pretty small pieces as it's more for flavor than texture. Okay, so now that you've got everything chopped and ready to go, uh, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and get your seven cups of beef stock on your stove simmering. You've got your two cups of heavy cream out here on the back on a very, very low heat. And then in the front, you've got three tablespoons of butter also on a very low heat. Once this butter has been melted, you're gonna um, take your small onion that you've already chopped up and been ready to go, toss it in there. And you're just gonna let this saute down for just a couple of minutes until the onion gets clear. And that's when you know that that's ready to go. Okay, so these onions are just about done. We're gonna season them with just a little bit of salt and pepper and I wish that I could explain to you how difficult these mills are when your hands are oily you guys to think I'm some kind of weakling. It's just difficult when they slide right through there. So we're just gonna put a little salt and pepper in there. Then you're gonna add one pound of your rice. Now with this rice, you're gonna leave it on this heat, which is a medium low, and you're gonna stir it in and you're gonna keep stirring this says about three minutes, and basically, I think you're just toasting it, sort of mixing it in, and it, you need to make sure that you're not burning it, so keep it moving. 
I guess this is why they say risotto is difficult to make correctly. Either that or I'm doing it completely wrong. And it says, um, you'll know this is ready because there should be a white dot left in the center of the rice. It says to keep cooking and keep stirring until it looks chalky and there's a white dot in the center of the rice. Well, this rice kind of already has a white dot in the center of it. So um, I'm just gonna wait till it gets chalky. I'm cooking with gas, which always cooks a little hot. So I'm gonna turn mine down just a little bit. I'm noticing just a little brown on the bottom of the pan and I definitely don't want to burn it. All this time you should be making sure that you're stirring your beef stock and that your um, cream isn't boiling because you just want your cream to be warm, not cooked. So keep a good eye on that. So now you're going to start adding your beef stock in just a little bit at a time and you're just going to add in a little bit and you're not going to add more until this is fully absorbed. So see that didn't take but a second for that to get fully absorbed. So now I'll add another one. I can probably crank this up now a little bit to a medium since there's some liquid in it. It won't burn as easily. But as you see, it doesn't take long for this beef stock to really get incorporated into that risotto. I do love lasagne. Cheese beer soup and the pretzel bread. Ugh. They should have a window at the Canadian Pavilion that does nothing but sell the soup and pretzel bread as a snack credit. Wouldn't that be cool? So once you've got the beef stock absorbed and your rice is looking nice and creamy, you're going to start folding in your roasted mushrooms. And you just want to make sure that those are really in there, mixed around so that every bite's got a little mushroom flavor in it. And this is my favorite part. I love, I could just eat this whole bowl of mushrooms just like this without any risotto at all. Once you've got your mushrooms nice and folded in and everything's really starting to get thick and heavy. I can really tell the difference in this from when I first started with the risotto. It's really thick and heavy. I'm gonna add your cream about a half a cup at a time. And same way with the beef stock, you're going to mix it until it's completely mixed in before you add the next ladle full. And this is heavy cream and it really does thicken things up very quickly. Now I did take a little spoonful of this risotto before I started with the mushrooms just to make sure that the rice had gotten to the correct tenderness. You want it to be tender? Um, but you don't want it to be mushy at all. So it still needs to be, when you start folding in the mushrooms and the cream, it still needs to be um, a little, I don't want to say crunchy, but al dente, I guess is the correct word. Just a little bit underdone because you do have a few more minutes of stirring in ingredients. Okay, so the recipe says that when this is ready, it should be slightly loose with a creamy consistency. Kind of looks like that to me. But again, I've never made risotto before, so this is all up in the air for me right now. So uh, anyway, so when it gets to this point, you're supposed to add the final tablespoon of butter. Can you believe that needs more butter or cream in it? And then turn your heat off. Fold the butter in. And then you're going to start adding your cheese. And this is going to be a cup and a half of grated Parmesan, not the shredded stuff you buy for spaghetti like at the store with salt powdery. This is actual grated Parmesan. I wish that I had a um, block of Parmesan to shred myself, but luckily the Fresh Market does that for me. It's already pre-packaged just like that. So we're going to add a little bit of cheese at a time, just like we have all the other ingredients. 
and mix that in. I can already see a difference in the consistency of it from adding this Parmesan cheese. I don't know if you guys can see this or not um, up close, but see how you can actually see the cheese stringing through there? You can actually see like strings of cheese in there. This is gonna be amazing. I don't even know if it's right, but it's gonna be really good whether it's right or wrong. This is really, really good. I'm not sure what I expected. It's been a couple of years since I had this dish in Epcot, but it's definitely, the roasted mushroom flavor is unbelievable. Um, it's not too garlicky, which I was a little worried about from the smell of it when I put the mushrooms in. Got a lot of cheese. This is a very heavy dish and this recipe makes a lot of it. Um, so go easy and uh, eat a light breakfast if this is what you're gonna have for dinner. But it is absolutely excellent and I will definitely make it again at home for my family. This would be a really good dish um, if you're having a family get together like for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, it is a little labor intensive, but the flavor is well worth it. So I'm Emily and this is CookingDisney.com. You can reach me with any comments or suggestions at Emily at CookingDisney.com or come on over to the Discords and see me at my Cooking Disney thread there. My screen name is Bunkins Mom and you'll be able to check us out on Facebook very soon as well. See you next week.